Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. It's a sharing economy proofreading platform that I'm trying to build. So anyways, in this particular video, I actually wanted to talk to you about searching bounded rationality, satisfying and decision-making. I'm actually a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship. And uh, this is something that I think about on a fairly regular basis. And I've been thinking a little bit more about this based on the readings I've been doing lately. So what I'm going to do in this video is get into the rational choice model and then go into behavioral decision theory and think about search uh, and satisficing and sort of talk to you about that. So um, the 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 behavior or the the rational choice model that a lot of people know and that is really common the way that we used to think decisions actually happen um until probably about actually 20 years ago maybe even 25 years ago this was kind of really the dominant way that we thought decisions were actually being made in that what people thought we were doing is that 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 we would come up with all these different alternatives we'd come up with all the possible alternatives and then you'd rank order these alternatives from best to least and based on some criteria and then you select the best alternative that is available the trouble is that we found out in the last 25 30 years or so in fact it went a little, it went all the way back to this guy called Herman's Herbert Simon in the 1940s, he started talking about this, but nobody really, I mean, he was really bright and uh, he was very influential, but it wasn't necessarily mainstream until the last 20 years or so where we, a lot of people started thinking about this and it's much more mainstream. Uh, the trouble is, is a lot of people just don't actually make decisions in this kind of way. Uh, it's it's the rare case that I ask my students all the time. I ask them when they made their school choice, you know, how many of them actually thought thought about going through and making a spreadsheet and thinking about the decision of making the school choice in this way. And virtually nobody ever ends up saying that. There's the odd person, but most people don't do it. Um, most decisions are actually made, the typical decision is made through sort of simple rules um, because of bounded rationality. So bounded rationality, you can imagine that, and this is what Herbert Simon's, a, a major contribution that he suggested, is that there is a lot of things that we can't possibly know in the world. That's essentially what bounded rationality means, is that we are limited in our abilities to make sense of the world. There's too much information. Um, we can't forecast the future. It's just really hard to make sense of all these kind of interactions that happen around the world. So what we end up doing is we just kind of default to sort of simple things and simple ways of making decisions that make sense for us in sort of the immediate local area. Um, and, and we don't necessarily make the sort of most best possible optimal choice out there. Um, what we normally do is do a process of, of what's called satisficing. So there is two things that happen when we make decisions. I mean, there's lots of things that happen when we make decisions, but two things I'm going to focus on in today. Uh, the first thing, and, and if you want, you can look at, there's a Dan Leventhal and uh, Torben Knudsen paper from 2007. I put it in the, the show notes. But there's two things that we ultimately do. What we have to do is generate alternatives, think about the possible alternatives that there are that we can select. And then from those alternatives that we select, we have this sort of choice set. What we do is we select the best possible ones within that choice set. The problem is, is that um, searching for these alternatives, that's the thing that I'm going to focus on today, is that when we search for these particular alternatives to put into our choice set to select from the best possible ones, it's really difficult to do. There's a lot of, there's a lot of messiness involved. Often we just don't have the right information. If we sat there and we thought about all the possible alternatives, we just simply wouldn't do that. Um, we often just default to very simple things like stuff that's close to us, for example, right? That's very local to us. So in, in terms of the school choice example, if you are in one particular state, you're probably going to look at the schools within that particular state. When I went and chose my school that I went to, I went to a school, a very good school in Ontario, but I only really thought about schools that are in Ontario 
I don't know why, it's just because it was very local to me and I had information about that kind of stuff, right? So um, what we normally do is this sort of process of satisficing when we're searching for alternatives. What we're doing is we're looking for alternatives that sort of meet a threshold, a, a minimum threshold of acceptability. We're not looking for, and this is another Herbert Simon idea is a satisficing idea. We're not looking for the optimal. We don't spend all of our time searching for everything that is optimal. We would waste all of our time every single day. It's just really too hard. Um, for example, doing these YouTube videos as you watch, they're pretty rough, right? But I'm doing the best I can in the given amount of time that I have. If I would make them really professional quality, it would cost me thousands of dollars. It would also take up all of my day and I don't want to do that. I just want to get ideas out that I think are interesting, right? I really don't want to do that. So what I do is I satisfy. I look for something that's a simple solution. I use my laptop and I just come up with some quick ideas. You can look at the, all the show notes are really just kind of chicken scratch. They're not really anything fancy, but they're an idea, right? They're a good enough idea that I can talk about and, and get into that. So really what I'm doing is I'm going through basically a process of search where I'm roughly thinking about these particular ideas and I'm going to the bare minimum that I could possibly do to get this out. And then I just find an adequate solution, right? I'm just finding something that is just adequate that makes a little bit of sense. So this was, and the reason why I started thinking about this, I, I read a paper by uh, Epley and Gilovich on anchoring and adjustment, really kind of interesting paper where they were looking at the anchoring adjustment bias or heuristic that we have. And what we do, and I pointed this out in a video yesterday, uh, that I, it's, I mean, it's interesting, or the day before. And, and what, what people do or what we do is we normally just have some sort of information, local information that we anchor on and then we adjust relative to that local information when we make decisions. And so what they showed was the adjustment that we make is really a satisficing type algorithm that we do. We don't necessarily adjust all the way and come up with an optimal sort of adjustment, but we just come up with something that's good enough. And, and here's the cool thing that I thought was really clever and, and, uh, and fun is that they looked at like alcohol consumption. Did that make the adjustment worse? And of course it does, right? It makes that adjustment worse and we're not going to drink nearly. If we drink too much, it's going to make us, it's going to make us, it's going to make it really hard to think. They also looked at, you know, whether we were like taxed or, or um, cognitively taxed, so just tired, right? And if that made an impact in our decision making, of course it does. We are making, we make worse decisions when we're tired. Guess what? Most of us are, we're either drunk or retired all the time, right? Like I, that's how we get through life. Um, so this is what I thought was interesting. And I was thinking about uh, searching for solutions and problems within organizations. And this problem I've been wrestling with and thinking about for a fairly long time is when do we actually stop searching for solutions? Uh, we come up with a problem within organizations, and then we and, the, and then we sort of search for the solutions to that to the to them to to for that problem, right? And then once we find an adequate solution, we simply solve that particular um, problem and and then move on. What's what's really neat, and what I think that the sort of takeaway from this kind of idea and thinking about decision making, this behavioral decision making, this way in terms of problems and solutions within the organization rather than optimal decision making of any sort of like the rational choice model is it really leaves a lot of room for improvement and it means that we're always going to be having problems and solutions that we can solve it means that we are constantly um, there's so much more that we can possibly do it's never ending right so what we should do is look for solutions that are adequate that solve the problem sufficiently within the organization once we find that then that's good enough but what that's going to do, because we're looking for sort of a satisfactory um, limit, right, like something that is good enough to solve the solution or solve the problem, then that means that there's, so if you find that's good enough, right, if you're thinking about the Pareto principle, which basically means that you solve 80% of the, the problem that you have with 20% of the solution, and that's, 
you know, we are going to get to that 80% limit, but then there's always 20% more and there's always more to do. And in fact, it reminded me a lot when I worked in a manufacturing plant, that's exactly what you did is you looked, you used the Pareto principle, you looked at the problems that caused 80% or you looked at the causes that caused 80% of the problems that were out there. And then it would usually only be like, a couple of problems so you just solve those problems and guess what the manufacturing process improved but then there was something else that was causing that and then you go out and solve that particular problem and then there was something else and you continuously improve over time it gets better but at the same time it also means that it's never ending there's always improvement that's being done and there's continuous amount of problem solving it really makes us think and really makes me think that the trial and error process is central to, to decision making. It's central to the organization coming up with solutions and coming up with problems. It is the thing that we do in organizations and businesses. So that's all I'm going to talk about in this particular video. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video as well. Do subscribe. I do appreciate it. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care. Bye.